Hi, I'm Val Corum and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a tips and tricks videos on the newly released Prison Simulator, where you play the role of a prison guard and deal with dangerous convicts. Alright, let's get started and please remember to like, subscribe or leave a comment as it really does help me out. Tip 1 Skill You gain access to skills after day 2 in the game and then speaking with Alexander Davis in the guards room. You initially get one skill point for free and then one additional skill point per level. And when you first get to this point, you'll have three skills. Each skill will cost you money and one skill point to purchase. There are two types of skills, passive and active. Active skills either increase or add a new action, whereas passive skills increase stats like health, movement speed, defense, stamina, etc. The first three skills I normally go for are all active skills. Searching and Intimidating, Eagle Eye, and Trust. Searching and Intimidating you have to choose to be able to unlock the next two, but it does give you a boost to your search time. Eagle Eye, this makes reviewing documents so much easier. So it's useful for prison inductions, uh, prisoners leaving, application reviews later on in the game. So once you've got this skill, you just click on the items that you want to check for a match, and it's as simple as green light, red light. Trust. This allows you to trade with one or two prisoners depending on how much respect they have for you. This is your ticket to making money. Once you have this skill, then prisoners will be marked with a dollar sign above the head, which means you can trade with them. You can sell both legal and illegal items with a prisoner, but I'll talk about this skill in more detail a little bit later on. Tip 2 Stats. There are four main stats. Stamina, Speed, Strength and Defense. Stamina is increased by using the workbench in the prison yard as you see in front of you. At the end of the day, before you go and talk to the officer in the briefing room, this is the perfect time to go and grind out some weights for stamina. Come to the prison yard and just grind out as many sets as you can. Depending on your level, you cannot max out this skill. I was able to get to 2 short of max at level 3, and then at level 4 I could max out my stamina skill. Grinding this out took about 15 minutes and is a small investment to pay to allow you to run around the prison for longer. Speed is increased by delivering parcels to prison officers within a time limit. This becomes available to you after your first prison intake daily mission and you need to speak to the prison officer outside through the door in the search waiting room just as I've gone through now. Once the event is triggered there will be green markers that can lead you to, to this officer. Both defence and strength is increased by fighting prisoners in the prison yard. Not just any random prisoner, but one marked with a fist in the basketball court, as you can see in front of you now. As you increase in level, you then have to fight more prisoners to increase the skill. As you see here, I would have to fight four prisoners and win to gain another defence or strength stat. Because you only get one of them at a time. You can't, get, you can't choose to get strength and you can't choose to get defence. It's just what's there at the time, and that's what you get. So in this case I'm getting defense, as you can see by the little shield above the fist. The speed, defense and attack starting points don't always show up on your map, but you can always walk run to that location and they can sometimes trigger the action to be started. So if it doesn't show up, walk up here and you might see in this case uh, the, uh, the fight guys walk into the area, uh, same as if you walk over to where the speed run is, which is just here, you might see that prison officer walk down to here and be ready for the speed attack for the speed run. Tip 3, boost your prison income quickly. Once you get to speak to the warden, he will give you access to the computer. This is when you can start this tactic. The best way to boost your prison income is to save up the first $500 of your prison money and buy either a golden sink or a golden toilet. You can access these by clicking on the toilet or the sink and then clicking on skins. As you can see here, you get different options, but choose the golden ones. By purchasing these golden ones for $500 each, you'll get an immediate 15% boost to your prisoner respect, which then gives you a huge boost up your prison rankings, which then also gives you a huge boost of dollars per prisoner, so increasing your prisoner income. Once you've done the first one, save up your next $500 and buy the other one that you didn't buy first. It should take a day, two of the most, after you've done the first one. This will increase your prisoner respect by a total of 
which will be a huge boost in income, which will allow you to purchase other items much quicker. After a couple of quick run-throughs, I was able to consistently get in the top five after buying just the golden sink and the golden toilet. And as you can see here, I'm ranked two. That means I'm getting $32.20 per prisoner. So from here to scale out your income, when you're in the store, um, scroll down and then increase your, your cells. I was doing some testing here by increasing block B. Yes, it increases your income, but it also makes it more difficult to manage because you've got two uh, levels in your cell. So if you actually increase out block A and block C first, which you don't have access to, you increase your income without increasing the number of prisoners you have to worry about. Tip four, prisoner following. When you have a prisoner follow you, like in the workshop mission, like we're starting here, once they're following you, you can just go straight to the location where you need to go. For some reason, the prisoners don't try to run, escape, do anything. They just follow you with no hassles straight to that location. So to save time and effort, just set the follow and then go to your location. So follow. I'm literally going to run straight to the uh, workshop. In here, and I'm just going to wait. The prisoners are going to run and they're going to line up here in just a moment. There's one, two, three, four, and five. For whatever reason, there's no issues on every single time. I've done this all the time, never had an issue. Tip five, money, money, money. There's two types of money in the game, prison money, which we spoke about in tip three, and personal money. If you follow the advice from tip one and got the initial skill trust, then that means you can start trading with prisoners. They'll be marked with a dollar sign above the head as you see in front of you now. If you confiscate as many items as you can, then you can continually sell and make plenty of money. Keep in mind that each prisoner has a set amount of money per day. So come back every day to maximize your profits. The tactic I've been using is to come through the cell block B every day and just search through the cells till you find something. Confiscate it, and this guy's got nothing. Uh, I've got an extra skill at the moment where I can just have a look and, and see. So because it's green, it means there's no item in there. There we go. So there's some drugs. We're not being seen at the moment by a guard, so we'll take that. It'll take a bit of time to get all this set up, all right, to get yourself a bit of an inventory, which I've got here. So then you come in, whoops, wrong cell, uh, come in every day, speak to these guys, trade, sell, sell. So we just made about $120. Just on that one guy. Now, if you increase your skills, you can sell to more. So, as you can see here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six prisoners with dollar signs. If I can go and sell roughly a hundred dollars worth of stuff to each one, it's about six hundred dollars a day. More than enough money to give you upgrades for your skills that you need, and more than enough money to buy your right gear, so helmets, uh, vest, and the leg guards. Now remember when you're searching a cell, there's seven different locations you can choose. So you can search the tap, search the sink, search the lid of the toilet, search the back of the toilet, the pillow, the mattress, the frame, and then when you get other items, you've got the chair, and then you've got the cupboard here where they have items and you can search in here as well. Plenty of options where you can confiscate lots and lots of illegal and legal items and once you've done that then you get the additional skill like i have it gives you six options uh, and other ones you can get to make it better is um, searching and intimidating level two because that'll make your search time quicker so this process is faster uh, and the other one which you see how mine shows up with green and red here uh, that's called funny feeling so there's two levels of that one level one and level two so literally, you could search this, and it's not going to have anything, whereas I know if I'm going to search this red location, I'm going to find something. Another good skill to get is negotiator level 2. 
there's level one and level two, but up to level two, this will allow for an increase of 75% to your bribes. So here I'm trying to confiscate his drugs, which I know can sell between for $60 to $77. But I can try for a bribe for $100. He gives me that, and I've just made more money than if I took the drugs and then sold it to someone else. Another way to min-max your, your profit margins. I hope that these tips and tricks have been helpful. Thank you for watching and please remember to like, subscribe and leave a comment as it really does help me out.